Hey folks, and welcome to this second video in a series exploring AI with the Raspberry Pi 5. Today I'm going to be looking at the new Raspberry Pi AI camera. So this camera is a collaboration between Raspberry Pi and Sony to create a camera that's got onboard AI. So there is uh, an AI model actually embedded within the camera itself and that gives us some metadata out of the, the, the images and videos that the camera can see to be able to offload that AI capability onto the camera. So we can see here that we're on the Raspberry Pi page here showing us some information about the AI camera. Uh, it's available now for $70, £70, somewhere around there. Uh, we can actually buy it in the UK from either the Pi Hut or from Pi Moroni here. So do go ahead and support one of those two wonderful companies. Uh, scrolling down on our description page here, we can see that this is using Sony's IMX500 Intelligent Vision Sensor. Uh, and then uh, this is the, the device that's allowing us to be able to offload that AI onto the, uh, the camera itself using um, a neural network model directly on that AI processor, which is nice. Uh, we've got tight integration with the Raspberry Pi camera software stack as well here. So we're allowed to deploy our own neural models with minimal effort, it says. So to get started, there is actually a getting started guide here um, to get you guide with either a prepackaged or custom made neural network. So we're going to be doing that. But first things first, I wanted to show you the AI camera and get that out of its box. So here we have it. This is the Raspberry Pi AI camera. So it comes in this nifty box. Actually, the box is slightly different to the standard square Raspberry Pi boxes that I'm used to seeing, but it's using um, Atrios here. So um, uh, an operating system underneath there, I imagine, for the, the AI in the camera. On the back, we have some information about it. So it's using a 12 megapixel Sony IMX500 intelligent vision sensor. Uh, low power um, inference accelerator and preloaded with a mobile net SSD. Uh, it's in interesting this is also supplied with the cables needed to be able to plug into any Raspberry Pi computer. So it's important to know that this AI camera is compatible with not only the Raspberry Pi 5 but also the 4 and the 0 and uh, other models like that. Whereas the AI kit relies on a Raspberry Pi 5 as that's a uh, form factor and tightly coupled device to the Raspberry Pi 5. So this will work on any of those devices, the, the Pi 5, the Pi 4, and so on. So let's get it out of the box and extract it from here. So oh, we have the focus adjusting um, uh, tool here. So it's a manual focus camera. And then we can put the box to one side. And then we have a anti-static bag. And within that, we have our camera. And we have two cables. So we'll see that uh, one is a standard cable with a mini to 200 mil. And one is standard and standard to 200. So that cable there, this is going to fit uh, devices like the Pi 4 and below. And then this one here. Uh, this one's going to fit our Pi 5 because it's got this mini connector. So um, we can see that when this is installed, by the way, for the camera itself, the gold contacts are facing the front here. So the front being the way the camera is facing itself. And then we have some gold contacts on the bottom of our cable here as well. Then on the Pi itself down here, we have two display stroke camera connectors that we can see labeled just here look so um, this one on the left that's camera zero display zero and on the right camera stroke display one we're going to be using this camera display zero connector now to fit the cable you need to lift this black latch so if we and you need to make sure your pie's off at this course of this course at this point so the LED is off I've unplugged it from the wall so we can lift this black latch. You have to be careful. Don't try and pull it too far. It will just lift ever so slightly. So you can see it's just slightly lifted there. And then we can insert our cable into that. So take the uh, the gold contact side. So this is easier said than done with one hand. And then that gold contact side must face the Ethernet port. 
So you can pop that in there, make sure it's seated correctly. You can just you know, give it a little push, don't give it too hard, but just make sure it's seated. And then we can push down the black latch to lock it in place. And then just to be sure, you can give this a tug and make sure it doesn't come out. And that should be it added to our pie. So if we pop this back down here and reset the focus, there we are. So next thing we can do is dial into our pie and we can start playing with it. So let's check the instructions and, and make sure that we're going to do things correctly. But first things first, let's turn the pie on. There we are, our pie is on. The LED is lit up. You just about see that down there. And I can see that the fan is spinning as well. So uh, give me a second and we'll get it all booted up and we'll be in our pie. See you shortly. Okay, and with our pie all started up and I've dialed in using uh, Tiger VNC, uh, we can start running through the documentation for our AI camera. And if we scroll down, we get some information about what our AI camera is all about. So it's using that IMX500 imaging sensor. Uh, and we have tight integration with Raspberry Pi cameras software stack. Scrolling down a little bit further, we have a getting started section here. And these instructions, it says, will describe how to run the prepackaged mobile net SSD and pose net neural network models on the Pi AI camera. The first thing we need to do is we need to make sure that we uh, update and fully upgrade our Pi. So if we copy this command to the clipboard and then switch across to our Pi. So here's Pi. Uh, we've, we've logged into the Raspberry Pi OS here that we set up in the previous video. We get uh, terminal up and running and we can zoom in a little bit here as well. So we can paste in the command. So this is sudo apt update and sudo apt full upgrade and run that. And as we only set this up a couple of days back uh, in the previous video, then uh, everything is already up to date. So let's have a look at what the next step is. So at this point, we need to install the IMX500 firmware. So that's sudo apt install IMX500 all. So we can take a copy of that and get that one installed. And we do want to install that. So we'll do yes and hit enter. And that looks like that's installed correctly. Okay, uh, we can see that this command installs the firmware and places a number of neural network model files in our user share directory as well. Uh, it also then installs the IMX500 post-processing software stages and the Sony network modeling package tools. Uh, interestingly, it says here that the kernel device driver loads all of the firmware files when the camera starts. Uh, it takes several minutes if the neural network model file has not been previously cached. So uh, the demos dis uh, below display a progress bar. So that's good. So we need to reboot our Pi now. So let's do that. There we are. And then we're back in PyOS again now. So that's happily booted back up. So we'll get our terminal session back up again. Maximize this. So next part of the instructions are we need to run the example applications. So with everything installed and with it uh, fully integrated with libcamera and uh, rpycam apps and pycamera2, we can use um, the rpycam apps. So this is an application um, which includes the IMX500 object detection and pose emulation stages. So examples on this page are located in USR share and RPICAM assets by the looks of it. So we can use MobileNet SSD to um, perform some basic object recognition here where we get bounding values and confidence values for an object found. Uh, it contains a few configuration parameters as well. Um, and so our IMX500 MobileNet SSD JSON declares a post-processing pipeline with two stages. Uh, where we can pick out bounding boxes and confidence values and also um, bounding boxes around labels and an image. So the following command runs the RPICAM hello with object detection processing. So let's do that. Good. Well, it looks like that works. So that's me. Hello. So... Um, not the best angle from me, but you can see that it's recognized a person there. Let's see if it can recognize other things as well. So what about a key? 
Yeah, recognize a key. Mm, no, it's really seeing person there first. What about if we pop it down? Um, what else do we have? Maybe an SD card? Ah, cell phone. So it can spot that. No, it's definitely looking for for people rather than objects, this one. Oh, what was that? It spotted then. So, but that seems to work at least. So let's see what else we can do. So next up, I see that should have recognized chairs and, and all sorts of things. To record a video with object detection overlays, we can use the RPI cam vid instead. So we need to stop that previous command and run this one. And now it's running our video, so we can hold that up to me again. Let's hold it by the camera. Hello, so you can see a person. And that looks like that finished, so I'm guessing that that was a relatively short video we asked it to record there. Yes, 10 seconds we asked it to do, so that's that 10 seconds just there. So that makes sense. Right, then what next? We can configure the IMX object detection in many ways. For example, the max detections defines the number of objects that the pipeline will detect at any given time. And threshold defines the minimum confidence value required for the pipeline to consider an input as an object. Um, and moving on, we have the PoseNet neural network, which performs pose estimation. So um, if we scroll down, we can sort of see what it's what it's imagining we can do here. So it'll get your your body's position and your limbs position to be able to get that. So let's have a look at that one. We can see underneath this that it's actually uploading the firmware for this in the background to the camera from the Pi. There we are. So that is actually detecting parts of my body here. So you can see as I move my arm around, it's detecting where my arm's going. So if I move my uh, microphone temporarily. And we can see that's pretty fast. So I like that. Pretty good. So let's close that one. And what's next? Pi camera two. So um, uh, for examples of image classification, then we can see the Pi camera two GitHub repository, but most of the examples use OpenCV for some additional processing. To install the dependencies, we can run that. So let's do that. Let's install these dependencies for that. And so we can run the following script to run the YOLO V8 object detection. So we can run that. Ah, so the next thing we actually need to do is download the Pi Camera 2 repository to your Pi to run the examples. So we can clone that. Okay, and that's done. So let's have a look where that's gone. That has gone in Pi Camera 2. Let's go in there. Let's clear our screen. Okay, and then so CD IMX 500, Python IMX 500. Okay, that looks like that's started. So let's maximize that window so you can see it a little bit better. So this should be running um, object detection. So yep, it's recognized me as the person. Slightly out of focus now, but that's okay. So if I pop that back down again and we hold a pen up in front of it, does it recognize that now? Doesn't look like it is. Uh, what about a pair of scissors, maybe? Ah, recognizing scissors. That's interesting. 
So it doesn't recognise pen, but it will recognise scissors. What about my phone again? Not so much, maybe if I hold it differently. Ah, cell phone. That did have it there. Remote. <laughs> So it did recognise it there momentarily, the remote or cell phone. So that was good as well. So it can detect some things and not with others. Person's good though. It's very good at doing that. Okay, so that's good though, nonetheless. And then we have another option where we can do uh, pose estimation as well so let's do that one okay so let's maximize this again and holding our device again move my mic out of the way Good, and that looks like that gave um, some interesting um, bits. It even saw my eyes at some points, which was quite cool. So, what do we have next? Scrolling down under the hood, so this is actually telling us what it's doing here. So, we have um, a normal camera module with a sensor, and then the image data goes to our Raspberry Pi. Uh, and then through the processor, through an optional AI accelerator. But actually on the right hand side, what this is doing is that we have the sensor and we move this ISP and the AI accelerator directly into the camera module. And not only then do we get the image data out, but we also get the TensorFlow output directly to the processor that allows it to do that overlay directly. So we don't have to calculate any of that on the Pi. We just get that metadata to draw bounding boxes and confidence um, on object detection and things like that. So that's pretty impressive. I quite like that. Um, and then we get some information about the system architecture here as well, uh, drivers and um, the bits that we've got. So interestingly, the, the camera module hardware contains an RP2040, which is the Raspberry Pi um, uh, microcontroller that it, they've designed with onboard PIO. So it's nice to see actually that it's using the 2040. Uh, that's that's pretty cool. And then we get some device drivers that we know we've already installed there. And we get some other apps as well. So I think that's probably enough for this particular video. We may do a further deep dive into this to see what we can build with it. Uh, but I thought that it would be interesting to run through that. In the next video, I'll be looking at how we can get our Raspberry Pi AI kit installed onto our Pi and start playing with that as well. So keep tuned uh, on uh, all your favorite platforms for some videos on that. Thanks folks, see you later.